Welcome back friends. Today we're going to do a little work out here in the gun room on my Diamondback DB9R. This is my 9mm pistol caliber carbine. I just picked this up a couple weeks ago from a guy here locally. Got it used. It looked to be in pristine condition and when I took it apart the internals were just as clean as the outside. So we're able to get into the PCC competition world for a, not a whole lot of money. And I had this Holison 507C laying around in the safe doing nothing, so it worked out perfect. So I got this thing all bore sided. I grabbed five different types of ammo, and we took it to the indoor range the next day to get this thing zeroed. We've got a 50 yard indoor climate controlled range with benches and everything, nice chairs. And so I'm able to get a real good zero on these things. Front and rear supported uh, with bags and a rest on the front. So we can take the shooter out of the equation, although the shooter ain't all that good. <laughs> so anyway, the good news is, is that all five ammo shot pretty good. I took my, my blue bullets, my 147 grain round nose, that's my IDPA loads. They worked fine in it, which was great because that means I don't have to change anything on the reloading bench. I also took some Phoenix 147 grain round nose bullets and the uh, power factor on those is about the same as my blue bullets, so that's good. Three different types of box ammo, Fiocchi and CCI Spear, 115 grain full metal jacket round nose, and some Hornaday 135 grain flat nose training ammo. So we're getting a good comparison here, and all the ammos did shoot pretty good. I can shoot any of them in competition, and it'll be just fine. Obviously, this is a nine millimeter. It's not going to be a hundred yard dime size group gun. Uh, we're going to use it mainly for steel competition. So I did have some problems and that was I had some really weird groupings and it wasn't, you know, uh, restricted to any one particular ammo. I had it with three different types of ammos. I was getting stuff that was five and six inches off target for no reason. And like I said, we're supported front and rear. So I brought it home, took it apart, gave the barrel the barrel a really good scrubbing this time, took it right back the next day, and after work repeated the exact same scenario. And I got the exact same result. I still get some weird flyers. So I brought it back home and I decided to take the comp off, give this thing another good scrubbing, but gave the crown a really good look. and. I really didn't see much of a crown, so I got after it with some solvent and a brush and looked at it under magnification and really there wasn't there really wasn't a crown there and what was there was kind of ragged. So I took it to a buddy of mine and said, uh, what do you think? He's a bench guy and he goes, oh yeah, that's not going to work. So I came home and I got out my crowning tool and I was going to, you know, recrown it. Problem was I didn't have the pilot for the nine millimeter barrel and neither did any oops neither did anybody else so the next day i stopped by the gunsmith down the street from the office he looked it over agreed with this same thing he says yeah that that crown's not going to work and you don't want me to do it because it's going to be 125 bucks and i know what you got in this gun so i said yeah you're correct he says but he goes just keep going down the street here stop by the auto supply get some valve grinding compound and then go down a little further to the hardware store, get a brass screw. This one happens to be 5 16 Put that in your drill motor. Put some grinding compound on the end of it. And put this thing in a vise and just go to town on it. He goes, you're not going to hurt it. He goes, I think you'll be happy with the results you get. And if not, you know, just get you a new pilot and recrown re that thing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to attempt to do today what I'm going to call the hillbilly crown job. So let's see how it works out. Okay, we're going to try and get a decent crown on this thing. You're going to need some uh, lapping compound or some valve grinding compound. You can get this. This is Permatex. You can find it at most auto supplies. If not, you can get it on Amazon. I checked for $4.95 and free shipping. And all this stuff is, is basically lightweight grease with some abrasive material in there. 
So we're going to put some on our screw here. And this is a 5 16 screw and it'll be fine for 9 millimeter. but if you're going to do smaller bores, you're going to have to go to a smaller screw. So let's try it. Get our drill in here and just start to work on it and see what we get. to go. Just keep after it here and see what we get. We're using the low speed setting on the drill. Let's get a flashlight so we can get a little better look at it. a little progress. It has cleaned up some of those edges that was on there. I think we're going to go a little more. Get a little more rubbing or a little more grinding compound on there. We're going to change to the faster speed and see if that helps any. Oh, it's too fast. Yep, that's looking a lot better than what we had. But I tell you what, this barrel is I'm not sure exactly what the hardness of this steel is, but it's pretty hard. I'm going to make one more pass on it, and I think we're going to call that good. You can hear, hear that grittiness. To be honest, I've seen this done on some other barrels and it worked a lot quicker. I don't know if those particular barrels were a much softer material or what. But this one took a little more than any of the other ones I've seen. All right, let me get that cleaned up and I'll see if I can get a close up shot for you. Okay, we got our rifle barrel here all chucked up where you can kind of take a look at it. I couldn't get it any closer just because it just won't focus any better, but you can see we do have a new crown cut in here. And if you look at it under magnification compared to what we started with, it's like complete night and day. The other one was really, really ragged, it looked like it had nothing at all, and now we have this. I've seen this particular crown job done with the brass screw before, and they had a much more pronounced crown in smaller caliber rifles though and also I think it was because those particular barrels were a much softer material. This thing is very very hard. I'm gonna have to research it and see what it is but I think what we've done here is gonna help us out quite a bit. We'll just have to see. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna put this thing back together and tomorrow after work we're gonna go right back to the indoor range and we're gonna test it out. And I'm hoping for some good results. Well, I'm happy to report that we have success. 
went through the same exact scenario we did twice before except now after the hillbilly crown job we've got no more flyers and I ran a little more ammo than I did last time just take a quick peek here uh, this is where we started this is the CCI had the most of this ammo so CCI is pretty good you know 30 yards and then uh, here it is up here again Here's the Phoenix. This also this is we zeroed on the CCI ammo just because I had most of it. So you're gonna see those groups are gonna be a little better. There's my blue bullets. There's the Hornady, pretty good. And uh, you know every everything will work. So uh, I know I can what I can do now is re zero with my blue bullets because that's what we're gonna use and I think we'll be in good shape. The main thing is is we don't have to worry about any of those crazy flyers so if your gun diamondback or any other if you're starting to see some weird things you might want to look at that crown first rather than me looking at it after i've already wasted two trips to the range i just wasn't thinking that way i'm more of a pistol guy than a rifle guy but try it out for yourself the six dollar hillbilly crown job works for me so you guys, if you got any comments or questions, don't forget to put those below. If you like our goofy little videos, don't forget to give us one of those. Hit that subscribe button. So until next time, you guys be safe. Keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. And we'll see you out on the range. Adios.